Hello world, all the kings, queens, and zooligans. I pray that everybody out there is doing better than well, living life to the fullest, living it on their terms, pushing a hard line at becoming successful, shaking suckers and ducking busters, and putting all your trust into the Father, God. Before I go any farther, man, I gotta send a shout out to the Father. Uh, just to bless and anoint this show and this episode and everybody that's watching. Thank you, Lord Father, for allowing us to come together in your name. I pray that you help and assist all those that's watching this program, Lord Father, help them get above uh, ground, help and assist them to make better choices. Uh, Lord Father, for through you all things is possible. Please rebuke the devil, evil doers, and bad spirits that's against us and ours, Lord Father, and continue to help us grow and strive for betterness. Lord Father, in your name, in Jesus' name, all things is possible. Amen. Now, uh, as y'all can see, I'm at my second favorite place in the whole wide world, doing what I love to do, man, moving and grooving and chasing success. I don't chase that dollar. I used to, man, and it didn't used to do nothing but have me in the bean doing time. Uh, having life all the way messed up, man. When time to, when I stopped, when I stopped chasing the dollar and started chasing longevity, success, is when I started to have money, man. You know what I'm saying? So I want y'all to do the same thing, man. I'm praying that everybody. Uh, that's getting released out of the bing. Thank you, God, man. That's love, man. You know, a lot of y'all lifers, it didn't matter what kind of life you could have, one of life. They wasn't letting y'all free in the state of California. So now that they is, it's a beautiful thing. Uh, one of the uh, Zooligans tapped in with me and uh, left a comment asking the question, is there a pecking order uh, with the, within the confines of our organization? And uh, I want to get right to it. I don't want to take up too much of your time. So um, on the streets, there is no pecking order. And I'm talking about my neighborhood and which I roam. You know what I'm saying? I can't speak on nobody else's but mine. On the streets, there is zero pecking order. Uh, what it is on the street is nothing but a state of confusion. Everybody running around like chickens with their head cut off and zero direction. There's zero leadership. There's zero um, direction as far as um, who calls shots, who tell, because nobody's going to listen. Reason why? I really don't know, but I have my assumptions. One being there's drugs, right? And, and everybody's on something, right? It don't have to be crystal, it don't have to be crack, it don't have to be sherm, it can be pills, syrup, you know, whatever, right? So that's one. Second thing is um, guns. Everybody got guns or everybody have access to them. So don't nobody care about nothing, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Number three, always the rule of all evil well not all evil but you know the one that causes most wars which is women you know uh because of women man not because the woman is adding flames to the fire meat adding um you know anything to the fire or anything like that it's more so because dudes want to uh show the women their masculinity you know what i'm saying so uh those would be my three main things on why there is no uh, pecking order. Now, I have seen a pecking order. And every time I've seen a pecking order, it's in prison. Uh, inside of prison, which I, I, I hate that this exists this way because it only exists in prison. And there's no reason why it should only exist in prison that you see a pecking order. You know what I'm saying? If there's a pecking order in prison, it should be a pecking order in effect on the streets and, 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 and uh, you know, 
it'll bring a lot more love back to the program. Um, when I was in prison, I was able to see the packing order. I was able to see the G's, which G's respected, which G's, you know, the more, you know, which G was higher up on the pecking order. Uh, you're able to see which ones actually had a thinking cap on their head and which ones were just followers. Because, you know, when I was growing up, and I don't know about y'all, but I grew up with a lot of big homies. And like I said, on the streets, everybody is gangster because everybody has the, the, the tools they need to be successful as a gangster. Most people, you know what I'm saying? Which is drugs and guns and women. And then, you know, of course, money. And every, everybody didn't have money, but some people make it look better than what it is. And then some people know how to um, run them up and still be that G without money, right? So in the prison system, like I said, I was able to see certain G's who was on different calibers, you know, looking like, damn, I used to look up to this dude, and now in prison, this same dude is looking up to me. It worked out like that because um, everybody don't have this, man. See, it's easy to be a gangster, a so-called gangster. See, the uh, reason why I said so-called gangster is because a nigga, a foolish nigga, is what a gangster is perceived, the so-called gangster. And that's a role that's not hard to play, right? All you got to do is act like you don't care about nothing, about your life mainly. You know what I'm saying? You don't care if you're successful or failure. You don't care if you win, you lose. You don't care about nothing. And many guys can play that role, man, with no problem. But when you're inside of a penitentiary, uh, it's more than just doing that. Because now, if you're a crash dummy inside of the system, then you're going to jeopardize other people from going home on a date that is punishable by law of code of conduct to g's and you'll get plucked with a knife or you get stomped out or rolled up or whatever and then your name is not so much uh uh as a name no more, you know what i mean so that's why, you know what I'm saying? Because they got rules and regulations inside of prison. You can't be no crash dummy because a crash dummy is going to crash the whole car. You know what I'm saying? Because somebody's liable. You know what I'm saying? And most times it's going to be the car. And people give your car the chance at handling whatever uh, friction it is first. And if they don't, then that's when other people step in. So, again... The only time I've seen paper uh, 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 a pecking order enforced was in prison or jail. County jail, not so much, man. You know what I'm saying? Because, again, uh, some county jails, you know what I'm saying, people find a way to get them kisus, but majority is in the penitentiary. You know what I'm saying? That way you'll be able to see who's running things, who's on top of the pecking order, which ones uh, is the gangsters, the gangsters respect. You know what I'm saying? And uh, like I said, again, Soon as they open up the doors and you're back on the streets, ah, all that shit's out the window. It's every man for himself. And uh, and that's why nowadays we have like my little homies. I love them to death just because they're my babies and they come from a, a, a section of the world as I. But they don't listen. There's nothing you can tell them. And they won't feel you or understand you until they are in that uh uh until they are in that situation in which they have to listen and a lot of times that be jail but then it's too late you know what i'm saying like i say a lot of people that's doing all this friction dissing uh bloods dissing bloods bloods dissing power rules power rules dissing power rules crip crip all that stuff right once they inside that wall everything changes and they don't be that set trip dude no more like that you know what i'm saying but they got to get there first and that's the problem you should listen to people that have been there man who's trying to drop down some real ism to you to where we can set aside a lot of this bull crap on me because uh uh if you ask me it's a lot of homies turning in their graves man you know what i'm saying uh, um because when they found themselves uh, becoming a part of this here little thing of ours, 
I can guarantee you that they never, ever would have had they seen the direction in which it took and where it's at now. The love is gone. And that's a shame. Because I loved it, homie. You know what I'm saying? I loved it. I put it before my family. I put it before my friends. Yeah, that's ignorant. You know what I'm saying? But um, they raised me, man. They was my family. And that's all I knew. I went to school with them. I went to football with them. I rode on the skateboard with them. You know what I'm saying? I listened to them more so than I listened to my mom. And they're crazy. I ain't my dad. You know what I'm saying? Because my dad was running around on drugs and my mom was towed up. But back then, they was they gave me useful knowledge. Man, they used to give me stuff where I'd tell my mama and she would be wrong. And I would be right. Because I got to hand it down from the big homies. And the big homies back then had love. Right? And they was helping to mold and shape us into men. That's what gangsters is, bro, if you ask me. They are the epitome of what a man is supposed to be. Discipline, right? Stand on their ten toes, have some 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 meat about their bones, homie. You know what I'm saying? Some realness about themselves. That's the whole point of being jumped in. So that when you are up against five other dudes, you're going to keep your chin up. You're going to keep your chest out. You're going to stay tall through it all and take whatever comes with it. Because that's what happens. <laughs> it ain't always good. So anyway, I don't want to take up too much of y'all time on that, man. I'm just saying, man, no, there is not, no pecking order on the streets. There is, it's lawless on the streets. And because it's lawless on the streets, you have uh, infamy and ain't nobody listening to nothing. Everybody doing what they want to do, how they want to do it, when they want to do it. You know what I'm saying? Until that time calls when they can't. But again... I don't like it. I'm not into it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, I disagree with it. You know, uh, I used to be a part of it too. I used to be a part of the problem. Let me say that. Because now, as I start, as we, me and my generation, as we started coming up and started, you know, moving up the ranks, the big homies we were seeing was on dope and stuff. And the big homie, that's another thing I want to ask. So I, I'll do that later. I've been doing another episode on that. But with that being said, man, uh, we wouldn't listen because they wasn't showing. Um, they wasn't showing how we were supposed to behave because they was behaving, you know, wickedly. Which brings me, I said I was going to say another episode, but I'm going to bring it to this episode because it just came to mind. What is a big homie perceived as? Right? Is it just somebody that grew up in a set that's older? Somebody that put in some work for the set? Then took this some time and whatnot? Because now, everybody is not the big homie. Just because you older doesn't mean you're a big homie. Now, is it the, is it the guy who's handing down straps? Is it, is it the guy that's enforcing uh, work to happen? You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of times, those homies be crash dummies. So what makes a guy the big homie and for a little homie to listen to? Like recently, one of my little homies and one of my generational homeboys, well, he's a little older than me, my big homie, but you know what I'm saying? I kind of ran around with him. I was, ha I was lucky enough to be blessed to be... Um, in the same room with them because I was banging a little ahead of my time. But they recently got into it. My little homie feel like, nigga, who is you? I ain't never even seen you. You ain't never been around. You know what I'm saying? You ain't, you ain't, when it's time, when, when, when this happened, you're not there. You know what I'm saying? You, you, you ain't showed up for this. You know what I'm saying? But now you're pressing the line like you the big homie. And, 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 and the thing about it is this. The homie who he was talking to was his big homie. But he has been in and out of jail, having his own troubles. Then when he's on the streets, he's trying to get his life back in order. You know what I'm saying? It takes time. So he can't really uh, deviate to the little homies. But so there's a gap there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And he's not going to read. The little homie not respecting him. 
So now they get into it and they bump heads and now they went to, because now you got to remember, the little homies is the future of the set. They the ones out there putting in the work. They the ones out there taking chances on their life at, at being criminals and gangsters and keeping it set above water, which, which how I feel is, uh, you know, that's their business. It's their time. It's their set. They can do with it in which they please, especially if the big homie is not actively engaging with the little homies by supplying some type of support, mentally, physically, mostly financially, something. You can't just be calling yourself that if you're not doing anything in the hopes of them being successful as young G's. So anyway, I'm going to leave this alone, man. I'm going to drop the mic, man, get on off of here. I want y'all to please, man, pick up that book for me. Five Star General, Volume 2, Street Marine, available on all platforms. Also, Five Star General, Volume 1, Cali Bangin. Books, man, I'm talking about powerful, impacting, and it can help. Not only you, but somebody else with that being said, man. Tap in with your boy. Hit me up on Instagram, PlanetZoo619. Peace.